Hello and welcome to yet another Two Minute Tuesday. This week, we're going to talk about a common requirement on implementations of Dynamics 365. For this example, we're going to use a requirement from the sales automation side. Now, the requirements that we're going to learn today, or I guess the steps that we're going to learn today, apply to really anything. It doesn't have to be just sales. You can use it for customer service. You can use it for project service. It doesn't matter. But today, we're going to focus on how can we use real-time workflows to essentially stop users from doing things. Uh, for this example, we're going to talk about um, preventing users from closing large opportunities. And again, I just decided to use an example. In this case, I'm going to be using um, an opportunity larger than $50,000 as a large opportunity. So I want to prevent users from closing those. So let me just show you how this works. So we're going to go into the opportunities. Let me show you sort of the effect and how they work. I'm just going to open the largest opportunity on the list. So you can see uh, for this opportunity, we have an estimated revenue of $10 million, right? Over $10 million. And notice that I added a checkbox here on the screen for manager's approval. However, when I do this for real on an implementation, I never just add a checkbox into the form. I just added this for the video to make it easier. But when you're doing manager's approval, when you're actually doing this on an implementation, you want to make it harder, right? You want to make it so that only managers can approve it. So I would probably do it um, with a dialogue, for example, that would ask the managers to enter some sort of uh, code or password in there. I've also done it by adding a uh, sort of a flag whether managers can approve on the user profile. So during the uh, checkups, during the check conditions on the workflow, I go ahead and check to see if the manager has the actual permissions to be able to accomplish this. You can actually do this with uh, third party workflow tools too that can check whether a user is on a particular team or it has a particular security role. So if you had, let's say, um, you know, large opportunities approvals team, you could use that as a check condition and say, check to see if this user can actually approve opportunities. Um, so there are several ways to do it, uh, several ways to deal with the manager's approval. But again, in this case, because it's for the video, I added just a checkbox. So let's see what happens when I try to close this opportunity without manager's approval. So once again, this opportunity is large, over $10 million. And as a salesperson, I'm going to go and say close is one. So I click OK. As you can see, I get an error message that says, hey, Gus Gonzalez, this is a large opportunity and requires manager's approval. So it's pretty straightforward from there. And that's uh, essentially what we're trying to accomplish. Now, again, you can use this for uh, other things. You can use this for... Let's say you want to prevent users from closing tickets they don't have the right clearance for. Let's say tickets that are a high priority ticket or an emergency, right? Um, you want only managers to be able to close those as resolved or something like that. So again, it's all on how you use the conditions, the check conditions within the workflow. So let's actually dive into how do you accomplish this, which is the topic for today's tip. So I'm going to navigate to processes. And we're going to locate the workflow. As you can see, I always name my workflows with the um, the name of the entity they're connected to. So in this case, will be opportunities. You can see it right there, opportunity, opportunity manager's approval check. So let's open this workflow and let's start the countdown and let's go. So in this case, as you notice, the, the workflow is active. So I'm going to deactivate it just to show you how it looks. And the reason why I'm using a real-time workflow in this case, I'm not the biggest fan of real-time workflows, by the way. I, I like to use background workflows way more than real-time workflows. Maybe that's a discussion for another uh, Two Minute Tuesday or maybe a podcast about workflows. But uh, in this case, I'm using a real-time workflow because I can run real-time workflows before events takes place. In this case, we're trying to make sure the users cannot close an opportunity, which means changing the status from open to one or from open to lost. So as you can see, I am running this. I switch from the default after to before. So now it says I want this workflow to run before the record status changes again from open to close or something like that. So that is my trigger. And now I go into the conditions. You should always start a workflow by checking conditions. So in this case, I'm checking a condition that says if the opportunity status equals open, which is good. That means that it's being switched from open to one or lost and the opportunity's estimated revenue contains data. In this case, again, 
Uh, I'm following this because the estimated revenue is not a required field. However, if I was doing this on a real implementation where we want to make sure that users cannot close large opportunities, most likely I'm going to make estimated revenue a required field. So this condition doesn't really is not really needed. Then after that, I have another uh, nested condition that says if the opportunity's estimated revenue is larger than fifty thousand dollars, which is good. Uh, is what we're looking for. That, th that's our condition for large opportunities. And the opportunities manager's approval does not equal yes, meaning it hasn't been approved. Then I need to stop the workflow with a canceled status, right? Stop the workflow. And here, when I click on set properties, you can see that's the message. And you can see that's why my name was referenced because I'm using the dynamic fields from the form assistant to call the modified by. So that's why he said, hey, Gus Gonzalez, you can't close this without manager's approval. Then after that, I use the otherwise condition, which you can get by just clicking on your check condition and clicking on the default action, right? So that's going to give you otherwise, which means if this condition is not true, then I want you to stop the workflow with the status of succeeded, which means just let it finish. Uh, don't keep doing it. Don't, don't do anything else at that point. So let's go ahead and activate this guy and test what happens when the manager approves the actual opportunity. So go back to sales really quick, click on opportunities, again, open the largest opportunity on the list. And now let's make sure we click on that. So manager has approved this thing. And now we're going to click on closest one and click OK. And as you can see, no problem. So we close the opportunity as one. Our workflow just worked. And I hope you enjoyed today's tip. We'll see you next week.